Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I will be covering the second half of my cache refresh guide video. In my previous video, I talked about uh, the actual rules of the cache refresh format. In this part, I will do a bit more strategic analysis into the available card pool for this format and the types of archetypes that will be stronger or weaker as a result of this limited card pool. Um, th this is just a preliminary analysis. I've not played any uh, cache refresh games myself, so this is all complete theory crafting. Nonetheless, it should give you a good insight if you are slightly newer to the game uh, as to which are the stronger decks so that you can base off there and uh, work your deck list from there. Which is rather important because if you're bringing this deck list to a regional tournament, chances are you probably want to focus more energy on your main decks for the main regional rather than to pour time into uh, this cash refresh side tournament. So let's go. Let's start with the runner side. Uh, one very key part of the uh, runner card pool is the breaker suite. Without breakers, you can't get through ice to steal agenda. So uh, I think it's very important to look at breakers and see which faction has the best breakers for you to peruse. Uh, note that as with all uh, uh, as with all card types, with the sole exception of agendas and uh, identities, you can splash these cards, so keep that in mind. Now, there are a number of breakers to choose from. Uh, despite uh, most data packs being not legal for this format, we still have uh, the standard Anarch Breaker Suite. You can see Paperclip, Yog, and Mimic available, and there's adequate support with Null and Data Sucker. So that is definitely viable. Um, on the criminal side, uh, because the Flashpoint cycle basically dumped a lot of support for stealth cards, we have basically an entire stealth suite available in the form of Blackstone, Houdini, and Dagger. So yeah, uh, Shapers and Anox have very complete uh, standard breaker suites. Uh, they also have possible AI support breakers. Eater is usually used as a main breaker in abusive decks, but I think it's not a very strong breaker in this format due to the lack of uh, R&D pressure with, in conjunction with Eater. You can't use Keyhole, basically. Artman is a pretty decent support breaker, but the stealth suite doesn't really need it. And then we divert our attention to Criminal, which we haven't talked about yet. Even though it seems like Criminal has the most cards of any of the three, uh, in terms of the number of cards I've presented in these rows, when you remove the not-so-good breakers, the breakers that are not exactly uh, very efficient, we paint a very different picture. Criminals, I argue, are actually the weakest when it comes to the breaker suites. Uh, they don't have a self-contained uh, efficient breaker suite as do Shapers or Anox. Um, all their breakers are rather inefficient and even Abag Nail, that's, a, that's marginal. It's definitely worse than even the Shaper or the Anox breaker suites. Um, let's uh, go back here and we see they have the most sentry breakers and criminals are known for being the best at sentry breaking but all the sentry breakers are crap! Steaming piles of garbage! You don't want to really play any of these cards. Alias can't break centrals. Fem costs 2 to pump 1 strength. Uh, Lustig costs 3 to pump strength even. And Golden, uh, it's rather mediocre. They are, it's also very expensive. So yeah, the very fact that criminals struggle to break sentries, which they're supposed to be good at, plus the fact that they need to import their barrier breaker, more or less, uh, basically means that criminals are very, very hard to play. You basically have to import all your breakers and tutor them up with special order. Mammon is a decent breaker, but it's still pretty expensive. Uh, it is an option to consider, but generally I'd say Anox and Shapers have the edge right here for this uh, component of breaker suites. Now let's look at draw and economy engines. Overwhelmingly, Shapers the favorite here. We see that there are two different types of Shaper builds you can go. Uh, you can go traditional Shaper and use breakers that we saw in the last slide such as Gordian Blade and Cyber Cypher in conjunction with standard uh, card draw and economy engines of Magnum Opus and all professional contacts. You have the good old Diesel and Beth Kilrain Chang to speed things up as well as self-modifying code to bring out your breakers in good time. Alternatively, as mentioned earlier, you can go straight for the Stealth Suite. A lot of stealth cards available for you, Net Merker and Cloak will fuel your runs uh, for the entirety of the game in conjunction with Smoke. And again, you have Diesel, SMC and Beth to speed things up for you. 
Now, criminals don't come too bad out of this. They have the best economy of all three factions simply because the Mujin contract is in faction. Moreover, they still run te uh, sec testing and account siphon, giving them boatloads of cash, even though uh, Desperado is only a one-off in this new format. They still also have a bit of card draw in the form of Aaron Marin, which synergizes very well with Account Siphon. So yes, criminals are not left in the dust completely. They are, a run based criminal is still perfectly playable, if a bit less efficient due to the one-off limitation of Desperado. Special Order is also very notable. It allows you to bring out breakers in, dub in double time. As for Anarchs, this is where they are the weakest. I argue that the Anarch draw economy engine is the worst, which is very surprising considering their dominance uh, in recent years. Trouble is, most of their good cards, Street Peddler, Inject, uh, Adjusted Chronotype, Liberated Accounts, all these cards are from earlier data packs and are not legal in this format. When you distill what's left, they, you, they, all they have is I've Had Worse and Day Job. Um, Wild Side by itself is mediocre at best. Without Adjusted Chronotype, you're losing a click every turn, which is very, very valuable. And it's not even all that good without uh, Faust. So I would only really consider playing Wildside if you are on noise or if you really desperately need the card draw, which I guess you probably need as an arc. Um, the other way you can wish you can get card draw is with Max. Now you I'm not putting IDs here. Usually I don't put IDs along with these cards, but Max deserves a big shout out because she is so efficient at drawing cards and <laughs> realistically Anarchs have very little else to rely on. So uh, Max is something very important to look at. Uh, so yeah, um, Anarchs really don't have a lot of economy options. Uh, I think this is a very very big downside of Anarch decks. When you start to build them for this format, you realize just how lacking they are in economy. Good luck with that. On kind of the bright side, there is some neutral economy available. Daily Cast and Dirty Laundry are both available. Wait, there's a big downside. They are both in creation and control. Which means, don't forget, in this format, you can only pick one deluxe box of your choice. Which means that if you're playing Christian and Control, you're probably in Shaper, which already has more than enough card draw and Econ cards. So, unfortunately, if you're a Criminal, you probably won't have access to Dirty Laundry. If you're Anarch, you won't have access to Daily Cast if, because you need your Order and Chaos box. So, long story short, Shapers come out very, very far ahead of these two. And as such, I think is the very clear winner when it comes to... Uh, the most competitively viable archetype for this format. The very fact that uh, Smoke basically has a self-contained deck full with uh, the stealth economy and breakers all in the same cycle, the flashpoint cycle, leads me to believe that Smoke is by far the best uh, runner choice for this meta. Uh, trailing behind would be Criminal. You have a rather wide variety of identities to choose from. Um, most likely you need the 17 influence, so you want to go for Ken Tenma, which also gives you a bit of economy. Otherwise, you can go for the higher economy of Gabriel Santiago with strong HQ pressure, or you can go for Los, which gives you steady economy. Uh, you could try to build around Los by putting lots of DRS effects, but don't forget that cards like Emergency Shutdown and Crescentus are in the first two cycles and will be rotating out, rendering them illegal for this format. As for Anarch, unfortunately, I think the only really viable ID is Max. Um, you don't even have get Wizard because that's rotating. Um, you really do need the card draw, and uh, Anarch card draw is just terrible, terrible, terrible uh, without spending influence. So I think you really do need to play Max if you want to stand any shot, if you want to even match the tempo of Smoke or any of the criminals. Another al possible alternative is Noise, which has... Arguably a secondary win con, but unfortunately, if you browse the viruses that are available to you, there are only four semi decent ones Data Sucker, Parasite, Medium, and Tapworm. Uh, those in the Order and Chaos box are crap. You don't really want to play Hive Mine with these um, viruses in particular, and Grave Digger is just not that good. You don't really want to play Shakana either, it's cost too much influence. So, yeah, even though Wild Side is available, Noise doesn't look very appealing. Now let's move on to Corp. Corp has a very special problem uh, that runners don't face, and that is they lose Jackson Howard, which is a very key uh, card in a lot of Corp decks because it basically patches a little f flaw in the game that Agenda Flood can happen and it will overcome even the mo best of players. Uh, and this is a big problem if you're trying to consistently win. 
As such, you want to build corp decks that score agendas uh, proactively. Slow decks are punished because you cannot hoard agendas in your hand without Jackson Howard to cycle them out. You also are a lot more vulnerable to early HQ pressure, which could give plus points to criminal. Bear that in mind when you're building your runner deck. But for now, let's focus on the corp deck and look at their agendas. This is something that all corp decks must have, so this is the biggest priority when we are analyzing uh, corp decks and factions in particular. Let's look at the number of agenda points that you can rake up with uh, co common uh, with what common wisdom dictates are good agendas. In the HP faction, we have 12 agenda points available from ABT and Efficiency Committee. Losing Vitruvius really hurts, and uh, unfortunately, you can't really play Global Food here. You could if you give up the HP big box, which is not something that uh, is too far-fetched, given that the HP big box is rather mediocre. And you still have Terminal Directive to support you. Uh, so yeah. Uh, HB will be missing uh, one or two agendas here and there. They can always make that up with filler agendas. Um, so they are not in the worst place, but they are not in the best place. Jinteki seems to be in the best place. They have the most agenda points that they can spend on uh, between the core set and the big box. Philotic, Future Perfect, and Nisei are the best agendas for Jinteki. And Future Perfect in particular makes Jinteki a very strong faction. Uh, with Film Critic out of the picture, Future Perfect becomes a very strong defend. Uh, self-defending agenda. Not to mention that uh, because global food is not available to all other factions, uh, defensive agendas are therefore a lot more prized. Don't forget NAPD is also not in this card pool. So all the more this defensive agenda suite leads uh, me to believe that Jinteki probably has the best agenda composition of all four factions. Uh, trading behind by just a bit is NBN. While NBN seemed to me the worst at first glance, well, okay, we need to remove one breaking news from this slideshow. Sorry about that. This is a mistake. We only have one core set. So, uh, only two breaking news. Get rid of that one. And this drops down to 14. So sorry about that. <laughs> Forgot about that. Okay, so this little change right here slightly deproves NBN. Um, because you probably want to be, be playing some sort of tagging strategy now that your fast advanced strategy is out of the window without Project Bill, and losing one of your three breaking users really hurts. Still, you can have a decent agenda suite because most importantly, global food is in your big box. Therefore, it allows you to fill up most of your agenda suite and leaves it still rather well defended. All you need to do is to pick another two-point agenda and put three copies of it to fill, it, fill the rest of your deck. That shouldn't be too hard. There are a couple of you for, uh, of them for you to choose from. Take your time to choose them. Finally, we have <sighs> Waylon. Sucks. St it sucked. It still sucks, and it will always suck. Seriously, what am I supposed to do with Waylon? Uh, then you don't have Atlas. You don't have Oak Town. What deck? What are you gonna play? Government takeover? There's no punitive. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm being slightly biased here. High risk investment is still one of the best 5 threes, uh, among the non defensive ones, and armored servers could be a very impactful uh, Wayland agenda. But all in all, the Wayland agendas really do suck. Trust me on that. So, yeah, Wayland by far has the worst agenda suite of them all. So bad, in fact, that you might even consider using the NBN big box just to get global food in your agenda suite. That's how bad Wayland is. Let's move on to win conditions, another important part of considering which faction you want to play. Without a win condition, you can't, well, win. Um, first and foremost, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of rushing needs to be done, and judging by the analysis of runner breakers, you realize that rushing is actually a rather viable strategy. With cards like Blackmail and Faust out of the card pool, um, you can viably actually, you can actually rather reliably get your first agenda out uh, without much contest from the runner. Sure, SMC and Special Order will probably probably mess up your day, but if you run the correct gear check ice, you should be able to get through, get your first agenda through, and try to uh, rely on some sort of win condition to carry you on from there. So let's see some of the strongest win conditions. I think the strongest win condition in this format is uh, meat damage flatline by far. We are looking at Sea Scorched and whatever you want into Boom. 24-7, hard hitting news, um, breaking news, any of them will do. The reason is quite simple. Plus 3 is gone. There's no Sports Hopper. 
a lot of the mid damage defensive measures are not legal in the format. Therefore, kill is probably one of the strongest strategies you can uh, lean towards. Net damage kill, not so strong. Even though Mushin and the entire Honor and Profit is a uh, hunting ground for Jinteki, unfortunately, because you don't have access to, to Cerebral Overwriter, your advanced traps are not that potent. The most you're getting out of a Mushin trap is a 6 or 8 damage Junbug, which is not nearly enough to kill the runner. You simply don't have the critical mass of net damage needed to threaten kills. And without Dedication Ceremony, Ronin isn't really much of a threat either. We then move on to Fast Advance. Baltic and Oberth are pretty good fast advance mechanisms. You'll notice that I deliberately left out Sand Sands to the Grid here, not because it's a bad card, but because the factions it is in, which is NBN, basically only has 1 3 2 agenda. So Sand Sand becomes a lot less good. Baltic can be used with AVT in uh, HB. You could import Sand Sand into HB as well, but with only 3 3 2s, are you really going to do that? Something to think about. Oberth doesn't need 3 2s to fire. You are trying to trade Hostile Takeover for a certain 5 3 that you're running in your deck, so Oberth is a fine fast advance mechanism. Um, Psychographics is another good fast advance mechanism right here. Um, it's in the core set. Even though you don't have mid seasons, there is hard hitting news and CTM, so Psychographics is perfectly legit uh, for NBN. We then move on to the more uh, denial kind of decks decks that don't kill or aggressively score agendas, but rather attempt to interact with the runner in some sort of arguably NPE way. Firstly, we have Rick Shooter in the form of Hunter Seeker. Um, this can be a pretty strong win condition and is a pretty good reason to play Waylon. Or is it? I don't know. Probably not. Um, Keegan Lane is also possible as a Rick Shooting mechanism as an alternative way of punishing tags. Uh, then you have uh, Potato Unleashed, which is also a very good way Probably the only way to play Jinteki, let's face it. As I said, uh, proactive kill, not possible. And you lose Caprice and Batty. So you don't have the tools needed to play Glacier Jinteki. The only viable Jinteki archetype left, I argue, is Potatoes Unleashed. Mill the runner with net damage recurred over and over again. Finally, there's Sandberg. This one's a generic win condition. If you're trying to play Glacier, this is probably the, your best route to go. Make a lot of money. Fortify your eyes with Sandberg and start scoring behind them. I'm really not sure how good this is because this takes a very long time to set up and you don't have Jackson Howard to keep your agendas uh, away from your HQ while at it. So yeah, I'm not very sore on Sandberg, but the rest are things to look at when you're trying to construct your deck. As I mentioned, to me it seems like Kill is the best route to take by far, and as such, I think Sync is the most viable corp identity. With controlling the message, message trailing very closely in second, because it receives so much synergy uh, with hard hitting news in the flashpoint cycle. Co uh, coupled with the punishment cards in the form of close accounts and psychographics, I think you can pr make a pretty mean CTM deck uh, that drags the runner through very taxing tag based ice. Remember that NBN loses a lot of ice as well. So they are pretty much reliant on the taggy ice. With sync, you are using the taggy ice to kill the runner instead. Um, note that economy is also something that uh, corps will flounder with. Even though IPO comes out in terminal directive, uh, NBN loses sweeps weak as, as such. Um, CTM is probably a very appealing ID because you can play assets like pair campaign uh, to boost your economy. Look at the other factions, uh, again, economy is very important, so I don't think you will see any other HBs other than ETF. And for Wayland, BABW is probably the most popular idea of choice because with Beanstalk, Hedge Fund and IPO, you have a good base of transactions to make money off. And as mentioned, as you build a corp deck, you realize that economy is very much on the short side. So an economic ID will be the best choice for you. You will only want to deviate from this when you really need your ID to proactively uh, to help you win the game, which is the case for Potatoes, because you're trying to mill the runner out, or Jamison. If you're playing solely for the Oberth Jamison combo, then yes, you need to play Jamison, which means you have to forego the BABW economy. Uh, Scorpios is notably not on this list. I don't think Scorpios is something is too much of a concern because um, realistically. Shapers are the only ones you have to worry about with uh, Scorpios and uh, the, what do you call that? The 
uh, conspiracy breakers, yes. Those are the only two things you really need to be concerned about as Scorpios, and for that you have Arc Lockdown, which is legal in this format. I would rather play Arc Lockdown in Wayland BABW with Hunter Seeker instead of play, wasting my identity slot on Scorpios, which could be rather situational. I mean, given that uh, if you're look, thinking of the strong runners which are going to be Smoke and maybe Criminal, these are runners that don't really rely on the heat that much, so Scorpios is a rather dead ID. So yep, that's my basic analysis of Cash Refresh. I hope you found it insightful, and hopefully that will give you a good basis on which to decide what decks to bring for a Cash Refresh tournament. In the meantime, thanks for watching and thanks for your support. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.